The story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts, featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Kate Clark Barker, better known as Ma Barker, was the mother of several American criminals who ran the Barker Carpus Gang during the public enemy era when the exploits of gangs of criminals in the Midwest captivated the American people and press. She is also sometimes known as Arizona Barker and Ari Barker. Born Arizona Donnie Clark on October 8, 1873 in Ash Grove, Missouri, Ma Barker was the daughter of Scottish-Irish parents John and Emmeline Clark. Clark was a headstrong girl with dark penetrating eyes and a nasty temper. Along with her siblings, she attended church regularly and spent her free time singing and playing the fiddle. An FBI report characterized her early life as ordinary. According to legend, Barker saw outlaw Jesse James and his gang riding through her town when she was a young child. This event is said to have sparked her appetite for adventure and a life away from the law. She married George E. Barker in 1892 and started using the name Kate. Their four sons, Herman, Lloyd, Arthur, nicknamed Doc, and Fred, were born in Aurora, Missouri, where they spent their early married life. The Barker family relocated to Webb City, Missouri in 1903 or 1904. They eventually moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma around the time Herman finished elementary school. The Barker boys were constantly in trouble with the law as they grew older. Herman, the eldest, was arrested for petty theft in 1910. By the time Barker's two youngest sons, Doc and Fred, were in their adolescent years, all four of her sons had spent time in jails and reformatories. But Barker refused to discipline her boys and would fly into rage whenever anyone, including her husband, tried to scold them. Herman and his three brothers started hanging out with other hoodlums near the old Lincoln Foresight School in Tulsa, where they became part of the Central Park Gang over the next few years. They were repeatedly involved in crimes of increasing seriousness, including robbery and murder. Herman died on August 29, 1927 in Wichita, Kansas, following a robbery in police altercation that resulted in the death of one cop. He shot the officer in the mouth at point-blank range. When he was seriously injured after crashing his vehicle, he killed himself to avoid arrest. Lloyd Barker enlisted in the Army during World War I and served until 1919 when he was mustered out. He robbed a mail truck in Baxter Springs, Kansas in 1921 but was apprehended and found guilty. He was incarcerated in the Kansas State Penitentiary. When he was released in 1938, he avoided a life of crime by re-enlisting for World War II service. He moved to Denver, Colorado after the war. In 1949, his wife shot and killed him. She was institutionalized. In 1918, Arthur Doc Barker began his career as a car thief in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Despite being caught, he managed to flee only to be apprehended in Joplin before escaping again in Tulsa. In 1920, a bank robbery in Coweta resulted in an arrest. His accomplice was found guilty but he was released. A night watchman at St. John's Hospital in Tulsa was killed in a burglary the next year. Doc was arrested, convicted, and given a life sentence for the crime. By 1928, all three remaining Barker boys were incarcerated with Lloyd serving time in a federal prison in Leavenworth, Kansas, Arthur in an Oklahoma State Penitentiary, and Fred in a Kansas State Prison. With their sons in prison or deceased, George and Kate parted ways. He moved back to Webb City where he operated a filling station. Ma lived in a miserable poverty in a dirt floor hut with no husband and no work from 1928 to 1930 when both of her sons were in prison. Kate continued to uphold her sons despite their crimes. In the spring of 1931, Fred, 
the youngest son, was unexpectedly released from Lansing Prison. He brought with him a fellow parolee named Carpus, who agreed to become his partner in crime. Barker approved of the newly formed Barker Carpus gang and allowed them to hide out in her Tulsa shack. Living vicariously through her son's adventures provided Barker with the thrill she had always craved. On December 18, 1931, Fred and Alvin robbed a department store in West Plains, Missouri. The following day, they killed Sheriff C. Roy Kelly and they were forced to run away from the territory. Mayan Dunlop, Ma's common law husband, traveled with them using various false names during their itinerant crime career. A wanted poster issued at this time offered $100 reward for the capture of old lady Ari Barker as an accomplice. After this, she was known to the gang members as Kate. On March 29, 1932, Fred, Carpus, and three accomplices robbed the Northwestern National Bank in Minneapolis and made a clean getaway. The Barker Carpus gang got away with more than a quarter of a million dollars in cash and bonds. In September 1932, Arthur was released from prison and joined Fred and Alvin. The gang moved to Chicago but left after a short period because Alvin didn't want to work for Al Capone. The Barker gang was back at full strength and more menacing than ever. Jack Pfeiffer, a notorious racketeer, proposed that they relocate to St. Paul, Minnesota, which had a reputation for being a haven for wanted criminals at that time. The most notorious crimes committed by the Barker Carpus gang occurred after their relocation to St. Paul when they were living in a series of rented houses. The gang operated under the protection of St. Paul's police chief, Thomas Big Tom Brown, and they went from being bank robbers to kidnappers under his guidance. With Barker's blessing, they quickly plotted another bank job for December at the 3rd Northwestern National Bank in Minneapolis. This time, however, they failed to adequately think the job through. The consequence was a violent shootout with the police, killing two officers and one civilian, which only served to solidify their reputation as the most vicious criminal gang in America. When Ma's common-law husband, Arthur Dunlap, was intoxicated, he was said to be loose-lipped and untrustworthy by gang members. Harpist described him as a pain in the butt. While at one of the hideouts, a resident recognized the gang from the photos in Through Detective magazine and reported them to the cops, but they were tipped off by Chief Brown and they were able to flee. The gang apparently believed that Dunlop's loose lips had given them away and they murdered him while traveling. Ma was moved separately, so she knew nothing about his death. His naked body was found near Webster, Wisconsin with a single bullet wound to the head. Chief Brown's involvement in the gang's escape could not be proven, but he was demoted to the rank of detective and was later dismissed from police force altogether. The gang relocated to Minimoni, Wisconsin, and Fred Barker hid Ma in a variety of hotels and hideouts during their stay there. The purpose was to keep her from learning much about the gang's crimes as well as to separate her from their girlfriends, with whom she did not get along. The FBI later claimed that she would try to break up any relationships so that other women in the gang did their best to avoid her. All through this time, Ma was the front person who could rent property, buy groceries, and be the mundane screen for her family. Next, the gang successfully carried out the kidnapping of two local businessmen, netting $100,000 in ransom for the abduction of William Ham and $200,000 after arranging the kidnapping of Edward Bremer. The FBI first connected the gang to the William Ham kidnapping by using a new method of pulling fingerprint for identification. The gang decided to leave St. Paul with the FBI on the case and without Tom Brown supplying information. They moved to the Chicago area renting apartments for Ma while they tried to launder the ransom. On January 8, 1935, Arthur Barker was arrested by FBI agents in Chicago. They found a map that belonged to Arthur and were able to figure out that the other gang members were hiding out in Oklahoma, Florida. The FBI located the house and confirmed that Ma Barker and Fred were on the premises. Special agents surrounded the house at about 5.30 in the morning on January 16, 1935. The special agent in charge of the operation approached the house and demanded that the occupants surrender. 
After about 15 minutes, the command to surrender was repeated and a few minutes later, a voice from the house could be heard saying, All right, go ahead. The FBI thought this meant that the occupants were going to surrender but after a few minutes, machine guns fire erupted from the house. The agents returned fire using tear gas bombs, rifles, and machine guns. The gun battle went on for four hours and all of a sudden, the gunfire from the house stopped. The FBI ordered local state handyman Willie Woodbury to enter the house wearing a bulletproof vest. Woodbury reported that there was no one inside alive. The bodies of Ma and Fred were found in the same front bedroom. Fred's body was riddled with bullets, but Ma appeared to have died from a single bullet wound. A 45 caliber automatic pistol was found next to Fred's body and a machine gun lay at Ma Barker's left hand. Their bodies were put on public display and then stored and claimed until October 1, 1935, when George Barker claimed Fred and Kate's bodies months after their deaths and buried them in the family's plot in the Williams Timber Hill Cemetery, nicknamed Cemetery of Tears, about 10 miles east of Welsh, Oklahoma, next to the body of Herman Barker. In the decades since her death, Ma Barker's role as the leader and the mastermind behind the Barker Carpus gang became controversial. Alvin Carpus insinuated that J. Edgar Hoover, who described Barker as the most vicious, dangerous, and resourceful criminal brain of the last decade, encouraged the creation of the myth to justify Ma Barker's killing. Quick Channel Promotion if you're like me and loves listening to Tagalog Macabre stories, then please go and visit a fellow narrator's YouTube page, Ang Pahina ni Iraliang. Link on the description box. Thank you! Hey everyone! I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat!